What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the FGB live stream for the East Coast, the Florida Swing. And uh, we'll be talking through, uh, for every single Florida Swing event, we'll be talking through some ownership, watching some golf, talking through maybe where we went wrong, where we went, where we rent, where we went right. It's too early for this. Uh, but yeah, man, I, we're pretty excited to offer this up for about 45 minutes to an hour of every Thursday morning's round. We'll talk through some golf. We'll look at some ownership projections and where they differed throughout different GPP contests. So it's pretty interesting to see where like a $1,500 entry fee contest where their ownership differs from a $5. Um, so we'll go into all that. Again, I'm Drew Matthews. Go by Red Kid Cheek through the DFS industry. And uh, let's get to it. Let's go ahead and hop in. Let's watch some golf. All right, guys. So right off the bat, if you do have any questions, hey, Nick. Uh, no, this is actually going to be something. We just couldn't do it on the West Coast Swing. So for the foreseeable future, as long as these tee times start you know, before 7 or 8 o'clock, we can do this from the 8 to 9 time frame around there. So um, hopefully, I think people find this somewhat interesting. Fantasy Labs has a great product. So I'm using Fantasy Labs ownership dashboard here. You can see we have uh, the $5 contest, the $44 contest, the $444 contest, and the $1,500. And you can start to see where a lot of these ownerships differ. Um, I love looking at the $1,500. I think there's a lot of sharp people in there. Obviously, it's a higher entry fee. And uh, you can see where you know they go really heavy. So we'll say like we'll sort this by the highest. Um, you know, JT, Russell Knox, Kokrak, Webb Simpson, most guys that people were on. But you'll start to see as you go down, you know, guys that were really popular, like Lucas Glover is only 8% in the 1500. Um, going down even further, Billy Horschel is only 5%, but he was 11.25 in the $5. So we'll look through some of these and just get an idea. Of course, we got golf going on in the top left. So we'll keep an eye on that. That's always fun to, uh, fun to watch. See if anything happens. I saw Adam Scott already teed off, which uh, I'm loaded up on. So hopefully that is a good week. But yeah, we'll start from the top. We'll uh, we'll start with the highest salary. We'll kind of work our way down. If you have any questions, pop them in chat, and uh, we'll see how this goes. All righty. So in the 10k and up range, uh, the biggest difference I think at least for me, was JT, the $1,500 guys, went super heavy. He was definitely popular in the $5. Something uh, most projections had him pegged around 22%, so obviously a little bit higher than they thought. Um, and then going down there, you see Ricky Fowler, only 7% in the 1500 He had a little bit of ownership. Brooks was extremely popular in the 1500 at 27%. Um, and again, the 1500 is a 100-person field, so it's it's a smaller sample size than you would get in the $5 with a 100K entrance. Um, Adam Scott, only 13%. That's disheartening because I uh, I'm I'm all over Adam Scott this week in the the few lineups, my main lineup. So hopefully that works out. Sergio, same deal. Um, so yeah, I th I don't think up here the biggest difference between the $5 and the $1500. And even the 444 is uh, Adam Scott and Ricky Fowler. So going down the list, we see Kyrdesh there. It's going to have a long day. It's going to have a rough day. Um, 9K range. This one was interesting because I felt like it was somewhat of a dead spot. Uh, I feel like most people start in the 10K and up. Uh, if they can fit one 9K guy, then okay, maybe they'll do that. And then after that, it, it, the low end really gets dead. Uh, so you can certainly see that in the 1500, Daniel Berger, see if I can scroll up a little bit, um, starting at, we'll say Cameron Smith, 12% is not, not terribly low. Say 12 lineups out of 100 in the $1,500. Had Cameron Smith, but then below that, you have Daniel Berger, Billy Horschel, Luke List, Ben Ahn, and Alexander Norn, all sub six percent i mean they're all around three percent so it just was a dead spot in line of construction especially for for sharp players most of them started obviously with jt or brooks which was surprising it looks like they hopped down to a gary woodland or webb simpson stack if you will and then this mid-range or low end of the 9k was just completely dead 
So it's definitely interesting to view this on lineup construction because you can see a huge difference with the, the higher dollar entries of where guys built their lineup. So it might help you into your next event or next tournament. Um, yeah, I, Sergio. So I think he was around 22, I think we said last night. So yeah, so 4% that drops and then Justin Thomas pops 4%. So yeah, you're right. Uh, it's... I mean, he's, I think in higher dollar stuff, it would probably be hard to get away from a guy playing that well. Obviously, has won here before. The two missed cuts kind of scared me off for paying that kind of price on this type of golf course because there's such a, you could have a tough go. Um, but, yeah, it definitely looks like the sharper people. Um, and I didn't check, Nick. I don't know if you're in the 1500. I would, I would categorize you as sharp for sure. So I don't know if you were playing in that this week. But yeah, man, it, it's surprising to me that they pretty much, you know, locked up a made cut for twelve thousand dollars, and I felt like some of these guys around ten k had similar upside and similar floors, um, especially on a really tough golf course. It wasn't like they're going to shoot twenty under par or something. Uh, so go down the list, hopping into the eight k range, we see. Uh, Alexander Noren got a little bit. I mean, 5% in the, the $5, not much. But uh, I didn't play him at all, 2%. So two lineups in the 1500 <laughs> played Alex Noren. It's a good leverage spot, I guess, off of Grio or if they hop down off of Webb Simpson or something. Uh, Grio, 18%. So there's one spot you can see where, you know, the general public playing the $5.44 was around 12%. And uh, the $1,500 and... That 444 is about the same, but the 1500, 18%. So again, it's only 18 lineups, but uh, from a percent standpoint, that's much higher than the uh, 12% that the $5 gave out of 100K lineups. Um, Lucas Glover, we talked about a little bit. And then again, kind of talking about that dead spot with guys starting in the 10K range, uh, maybe picking up one guy in the 9K range, the, the upper nines with Woodland or Webb Simpson. You can definitely see that... Uh, this mid 8k range is completely dead and i think me and uh you know nick you and i were talking about this a little bit yesterday that that could be that could be the disaster spot and it looks like most people avoided it in the 1500 um and the five dollar like it doesn't look like it was terribly popular besides piercy and thompson so um yeah not too much to talk about there kiradash is pretty low schwartzel low scott piercy michael thompson so, hopping down in the upper, well, we'll yeah, we'll, we'll drop down into the upper sevens, because I think that, that was where I had a tough time. Um, so, like, in one of my lineups last night, I had, I think I had 7,600, and that lineup had Gary Woodland in it. Um, or no, I take that back. It had uh, Adam Scott in it, and it was like, if I could save $200, if I dropped down to Sergio, then I could get up to a CT Pan or a Russell Knox. Um, so I actually went down from there, which we can get to. I'm, I'm curious to see where this guy's ownership's at. But it was a really weird line of construction in the, top, in the top seven. So I'll be curious to see where kind of the mid sevens falls with ownership if uh, the top seven is really heavy. So again, Russell Knox, 17% in the $5, 34% in the 1500 So they weren't afraid to uh, chase some Russell Knox chalk. He was... Certainly one of the better plays in that range. Been playing really well. Has played well here. Um, several years ago, I think he had a, a third place and a second place back-to-back. -back. So, makes sense. You're paying a $1,500 entry fee. I want a little bit of safety. CT Pan looked good, but I started digging in more, and it just didn't look as appetizing as like a Russell Knox, who had been playing the prior weeks. He played well in Mexico. It's just a lot of positives for this golf course and a Russell Knox type of player. Um, so going down the list a little bit more, Graham McDowell, that's what I like to see. 21% in the 1500, 15% in the $5, still up there. Uh, but yeah, I heard people start to want to fade. So I, I hope Graham plays pretty well. I think I have 50% exposure, but, uh, yeah, that's always encouraging to see at least, at least that wasn't a, a sticking point for the, the sharps in the $1,500 field. JK Ray, what's up, man? Yeah, man. It's a little uh, Under Armour shirt, thanks to Mr. Chris Ferreter. Um, And again, hopping down a little bit further, we start to see 
that mid 7k range is completely dead so Joaquin Neiman I liked uh, I can't remember how many lineups I played him in but I I started getting hesitant just if he's been putting bad mentally if he starts putting bad that might not be a good thing so ball striking I don't think was awful but uh yeah I'm fine with you know seven percent six percent you're really not missing out on much let's see let's see let's see thanks man um so I gotta take a sweet coffee it's too early it's too early Hopefully you're enjoying the golf. Hopefully you're winning some money already. That's not good. Adam Scott. Man. All right. So back to it. So looking at the last couple in the uh, kind of the mid to low tier in the 7K range. Uh, like I said, Jokey Neiman, 6%, 7%. It's about in line with what I would expect. For him, if you uh, obviously went overweight on him, you're in a great spot. If you went underweight on him, you're probably not killing yourself in GPPs, which is good. Like, uh, I feel like sometimes you get caught up there. I mean, if he's a good play in your mind and you play him, that's great. But I think sometimes people think, well, if he's a lower owned guy, I really need the leverage. And I wouldn't jeopardize, you know, a 12% guy, depending on the person, obviously. But like a 12% to get down to a 6%. If you really are higher on the 12% guy, in my mind, it doesn't make sense. You would be kicking yourself if you miss that. Oh, man. Oh, Adam Scott. I knew it. I knew it was too good to be true. What's up, P-Dub? Welcome, man. Uh, all right, going down the list. Another big dead spot in the mid-sevens. Uh, Taylor Gooch, uh, Chris Kirk, Jimmy Walker, Kelly Kraft. Chris Stroud was a WD, so some people played him. Great, that's that's free money. Someone paid the rake. Uh, Dylan Fratelli, I like to see this too. I know J.K. Ray likes to see it. Seven percent in the five dollar and seventeen percent in the fifteen hundred dollar. Uh, I like Dylan quite a bit this week, so hoping he plays well. And uh, going down a bit further, Kokrak. Wow. The Sharps bid on Kokrak, 32% in the 1500, 33% in the 444, uh, 23% in the $5, really high, like relatively speaking to the number of lineups in that contest. Uh, Kevin Tway, Sung JM, I like to see that. Sung JM 20% versus 11% in the $5. So I don't know if you played a ton of Sung Jay, Nick. I don't know if he's still here either. Uh, he's a busy guy up in New York City. But uh, yeah, Sung Jay, Sung Jay, I just had to had to play. I mean, you, you look at his results from last year on the web.com, how consistency how consistent he was. His stats have been looking good, no concerns. You gotta, I just felt like you have to play Sung Jay at 7,300. Uh, it's it's cool to see 11 percent to 20 20 percent difference there between the two contests. But uh, yeah, he seemed like. He seemed like a guy you can't really be off the train, especially at that kind of price for too long. And I'm hoping a tougher golf course will, will be a good thing for him. And Bermuda. Jed Lowe says Bermuda. So hashtag play good players. All right, going down the list a bit more. Again, another big dead spot. And uh, kind of judging the dead spot off the 1500 because I feel like they're more critical in their line of construction. What you kind of get in the $5 is guys that are building a bunch of lineups with an optimizer. And honestly, uh, if, you're, if you're using optimizer right, obviously, it's a huge benefit. But some people will just run you know, 50 lineups or 20 lineups or 100 lineups, 150 lineups. And the optimizer is going to be pairing like a JT that has a high projection. Like he's relatively point per dollar at 12k is the same as a bud collie at 7200 it'll plug in it'll plug in jt all day long and uh find the savings somewhere else so you'll you'll get sprinkles of guys like you know cameron davis and matt jones so i'm more concerned with the 1500 because those guys aren't running that off an optimizer uh i mean maybe the godfather is i don't know but 
it, those definitely seem like more hand-built lineups. They're being very critical on pivots. They're being very critical on their starting point and ending point. They're not just, you know, picking out a pool and seeing what the optimal lineup comes out as. All right, going down the list to the very low sevens. Jim Furyk got some love. There we go. Uh, Trey Molak's pretty low. So if you guys are contemplating playing him and whether you did or didn't, you know, he's around 7.8%, which I think is what he was projected at or pretty close in the $5. And then he was only 7% in the 1500. So if you went underweight on Molinax, I think you're in a good spot there. Uh, if you went overweight, you you could, that could certainly work out, but just judging off of the 1500 being so low owned, like compared to Furyk here at 7,021%, uh, the pivot there would obviously be Furyk from a sharp mentality. Uh, Going down, another big dead spot just at the sevens and the 69s. I like it. I like it, Nick. Um, yeah, surprised he was only 11. Talking about Sungjae, I'm guessing. Yeah. I mean, $5 contest is just so many. And people like names. So, like, <laughs> Coke Rack there got a good chunk of stuff, a good chunk of ownership. Um, even Varner got a good, a good healthy bit, but yeah, it's good to see though. I, I like that differential 20% to 11%. That makes me feel decent. What is Adam Scott doing? Double bill you right off the bat. I thought there wasn't supposed to be wind. It's already whipping down there. Great, great, great. Alrighty, going down, we'll go hit the last bit in the 6k range. Um, Orange Man, welcome man. Don't get banned. I heard you were having some issues yesterday. So upper 6K range, we have, let's hop back up actually, because I think uh, the people I was interested in, so Austin Cook and Nick Watney were ones I heard a decent bit about. Austin Cook came in at 3%, 7%, so, so nothing crazy there, you know, Seven lineups, 3.2% to five is really not that much. Uh, Nick Watney, 7%, 10%. Again, talked about him a bit, and uh, I know J.K. Ray liked him. I wasn't sold on him. I think Nick actually played him. I, I didn't really – I felt like there were some pivots. Like if I went lower, then I could pivot up from a guy higher in like the 8K range and get out of that range. So kind of avoided Nick Watney. Didn't mind the play, but it just wasn't something I was – interested in I, I just didn't see enough to feel great about it um dead spot there but i'm not going to touch on that it's obvious those guys aren't good at golf i mean <laughs> ollie ollie was actually interesting i feel like he's actually playing better so we'll see how this florida swing treats him but i wouldn't be surprised if he pops back into some decent form in the next couple weeks uh, maybe around valspar or something uh, Johnny Vegas, a little bit of love, 7%. And uh, Stuart Sink, 8% in the $5, 11% in the $44, 13% $444, and 19% in the 1500 Pretty good. People like Stuart Sink. And he's a good iron player. He's very accurate. So it makes sense on this type of golf course. Like, it just, you start doing the math a little bit, and you think of a guy that's that cheap, or in the 6K range with the pedigree of his, Grades out pretty well, T to green, uh, specifically with the irons, which is important. Cookie at 3%. Yeah. Yeah, you're level with the field there. You're underweight, though, to the sharps. Um, so a couple of notes in this range. So Sam Burns, 3.5. I, I heard a little bit of him just off, of, I think, last year's finish. Uh, looking at the leaderboard right now. Not too bad. It's early, very early. Um, so Sam Burns off of last year's finish, he got a little bit of love. Uh, 4% um, or 3.5%, 2% in the 1500 dollar Obviously, two lineups in the $1,500. I just, again, they're, they're hand-building those. They're not taking unnecessary risks in the $5. People could probably sprinkle a little bit more and get away with some losses in those lineups. Uh, all right, yeah, big dead spot in the 6700 range. 
for both. I mean, for for five dollar and the fifteen hundred, big big differences there, or not big differences, just big dead spots. Yeah, dropping down to sixty five hundred. Johnson Wagner got some, so I like to see that. I didn't play him. I didn't play him as much uh, as I may have thought I would on Monday night. His missed cuts at this event, I just figured it wasn't worth the ownership. Like, uh, I don't need to leverage 6% versus a guy that's missed the cut here three times, even with good form coming in. So just avoided that situation. Um, another, I mean, I'm not going to call it a dead spot. I think just people's lineup construction just led them away from a lot of these areas with bad players. Uh, Beauregard, a little bit, 2.9 and 2%, a little bit, very, very little. Uh Bronzen Bragoon I actually played. And I like to see someone in the $1,500 played Bronzen Bragoon. Um, thought process there. I looked back at his last couple results and they were missed cuts. But I looked into his actual rounds. And uh, at the Genesis, which was his, his previous event before coming here, I think he actually shot 64. I think he shot 64 on Thursday. Ended up shooting 75 Friday. And it was the weird wonky weather. But uh, just shooting a 64, whether or not you miss the cut, he's got he's playing well. I mean, you're playing well if you shoot 64. He didn't come back and make the cut, but I like seeing that. At 6,200, I definitely took a, a flyer on Bronze and Bergen. I like that quite a lot. So 1% there and, you know, whoever that is in the 1,500, you love to see it. You just love to see you're in the same category as some guy, you know, basically paying his rent in entry fees. So Denny McCarthy got a good chunk, actually, uh, 2% and 5%. I mean, it's only five lineups in the 15, but that's he wasn't really on my radar. I think he plays well in tougher tracks, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, I might have to look, that, look at him a little bit more going to the next couple events. I'm not sure if he's going to get into, like, Bay Hill. I don't think he's in the players, but maybe the Valspar or something, which is a, obviously a, a tough track as well. Um. Alrighty, last couple in this low end. Hudson Swafford got some love. I was looking at him last night. He was interesting because he was a guy everyone loved, you know, right after the Sony and the Desert Classic. And then he just, it's funny how these guys get hyped up off of a couple good showings. Um, and then they have one bad finish or they just don't finish high enough and they just completely fall off the radar. Like Hudson Swafford was 7,800, I think, at the, at the Sony Open. Uh, or the Desert Classic, I think, and maybe even 8K, and he was like 20% owned. So, oh yeah, oh yeah, good stuff. Um, and all right, Kyung Hoon Lee, someone threw that in the chat last night. Don't feel terrible about missing that one. If you're playing a bunch of lineups, I can definitely get around, you know, five, three to five percent, but uh. You know, no harm, no foul. Svensson, 1.633%. So maybe Nick is in the $1,500. <laughs> um, and that pretty much does the, the low end. So interesting, interesting. Roberto Diaz played him more of a flyer, kind of in that bronze and Burgoon category of, I know, what, I know what to expect. Right now, what I'm expecting from well, Gary Willen's playing good, so that's good. Uh, yeah, that leaderboard, Bud Colley, Tyler Duncan. I didn't even know Tyler Duncan was in the field. What am I doing? Neither did anyone else. 0.45% and 1%. <laughs> you an MME guy, Nick? Probably more fun with like player pools and like uh, I guess underweight, overweight. It's hard to be like technically overweight when you build one lineup in the fifteen hundred. I don't even know. Maybe that's like a three max or two max. I'd be a two max. But sweet, uh, P Dub, don't jinx Scott yet. There's time. If he can just stay around even, he'll be fine. Not good start though. But yeah, we'll, uh, this was somewhat 
I honestly, I, I kind of forgot to mention on the, the live stream last night and on the podcast. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll be running this again for the next couple Florida swing events and hopefully, uh, picks up a little bit, not a ton of you in here, which is totally fine. It's something I just want to, uh, I really should have said something last night and just completely forgot, but I appreciate you guys tuning in. So I'll hang on for a little bit longer. We'll watch some golf. Uh, I don't have, don't have the full screen, but we can watch it. I paused it. My bad. Um, I am me in certain, in certain events, and I really don't have a rhyme or reason for my MMEing. So I don't know if I don't know if Nick like MMEs every week. Like I think this week would have been a good one to max enter the 150, or not the 150, 150 in the five dollar. Um, I just didn't have time to really finite like a 50 player pool to build all those lineups. So I only built a handful by hand. So. Yeah, I, I do MME. I'll probably MME each of the Millie Makers this year. And then uh, it just depends on the field. And you could go both ways. So, like, really strong fields. You could, you know, like last week and say it's a limited field, strong field. Basically, just try to get as many sprinkles as you can and try to hit the nuts. And then in weeks like this, if you have a really tight core up top, then you can sprinkle the low end and, again, just try to hit the nuts. But you keep a somewhat focused core in that mid range, like Gary Woolen would probably be a core play. Um, a lot of those guys up top, honestly, but you can see the ownerships in the JT, JT. I was really surprised by Brooks, but like JT and Woodland, that would probably be good core combination for 50% of the lineups. Interesting. See you, Nick. Have a good one, man. I didn't set up a full screen, uh, a full screen PGA Tour live either, so I gotta be in the shot, and you gotta watch ownership projection or <laughs> ownerships. Uh, yeah, I'll get out of here at like eight thirty. We'll just do a thirty minute show for today, for being the first event in the Florida Swing. But yeah, we'll we'll try to do this each week for the Florida Swing going forward, if it's uh, somewhat popular, just because it's interesting to see where people, the sharp people, go versus the the five dollar wouldn't say fish, but like more of a mass entry mindset versus a single entry mindset. And those are usually the the guys maybe you looked at and wow, I really, they valued this more versus, you know, another guy in that range. Um, like Adam Scott was only 13%. So that's disheartening. I mentioned that earlier. And, uh, you know, Webb Simpson really high, it was actually higher than Woodland. So that could be, that could be from a lineup construction thing. Just saving $200 allowed you to go from a you know, a seventy four hundred dollar guy to a seventy six hundred dollar guy, or seventy six to seventy eight. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't think I got anything else. Easy peasy. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. This screen went black. It's not because I paused it. I don't think. Maybe it is. But uh, all right, I'll get out of here. Appreciate it, guys. We'll see you. Uh, I mean, good luck this week. We'll see you around. I'm sure uh, you can catch me on Twitter. And then uh, we'll be back on Monday night for the podcast. And we'll try to hit up next week's event with the live stream Wednesday night as well. And we'll be back here Thursday morning next week. So good luck, guys. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you around.